Parallax Animations, probably the best known photo animation technique on the planet because it's easy to set up and it works on almost any fixture. It works like this, you take your still photo, separate objects on it into layers and add a little bit of movement in between them. This animation can be done in almost any compositing applications such as Photoshop, but if you want to take it to the next level and create professional looking parallax animations, you should use After Effects. In this video I'm going to show you how to get this professional quality into your parallax animations and we're going to take this picture and turn it into an animated photo. We're gonna use a little secret for After Effects and it's called Photo Motion. It's a toolkit for After Effects and it will help us make this happen. All of that and more coming up. What's going on guys, Tom here from Integnity with yet another video about photo animation. Before we jump to After Effects, make sure you check the description section below as you will find links and other useful information there. If you want to learn more about photo animation, After Effects and video in general, hit that red button and subscribe to our channel. Alright, let's animate something. Okay, so in this video tutorial I'm going to be using Windows instead of my original Mac and this is just to show you how it actually looks on a different platform. So obviously the first thing we're going to need is After Effects. If you have After Effects, then the second one is called Photo Motion. Photo Motion is a toolkit for Adobe After Effects that can help you animate your pictures. If you open this folder over here, this is how Photomotion looks. And as you can see, it's not just one, we have multiple different projections. These projections can help you animate different types of pictures. So we have Portrait. Portrait is a professional projection to help you animate faces and portrait pictures. Then we have Mirage. Mirage is perfect for animating organic things such as water or smoke or sky or things like that. Then we have Horizon, which is a professional 3D projection for people who want to use all of these professional tools to animate their pictures. Then we have Glacier. Glacier is perfect for those animations where you import your video, freeze a part of that video while the rest is still playing in seamless loop. But in this video we're going to be focusing on photo motion parallax. Before we jump to After Effects, let's just have a look what we're going to be doing. So we're going to animate this picture of this lovely parrot from Unsplash. I'm going to put link into the description section so you can download it and follow along with me. So you might be wondering why is this picture good for parallax animation? And it is because we can separate it into multiple layers and put them behind each other. Let me just quickly show you a video that I created so you can visualize this better. We're going to create something like this. So this is how parallax usually works. You put each individual layer behind the other one and you can then animate the camera and create this fake parallax effect. So back here in this folder we're just going to double click on parallax and here you can see multiple After Effects project files. Well you might be wondering where is the installation file for Photomotion Parallax? Well there isn't any and that is because Photomotion is a fully portable application. What that means is that you can take this folder with you and start on one computer, save it, take that folder to the next computer that you're working on and continue where you left off. And the whole interface and all of that will be loaded for you into After Effects automatically so you don't need to install any other software on those additional machines. If you're running on the latest After Effects release, all you have to do is just double click on this file. But if you are using older versions such as After Effects CC 2015 or 2017 or 18, all you have to do is just right click on one of these files, hit open with and select your version over here. Since we are running on the latest After Effects version, all we have to do is just double click on this file. This is going to open After Effects for you and as I said before, everything will be loaded into the interface automatically. Okay, so we are in After Effects now. If you've never opened After Effects before, let me just quickly show you what's going on here. Over here you have your viewport, down here you have your timeline. This is your timeline head, so you can scrub the timeline just like this. And over here you have your project window. So let's start using Parallax. First thing you need to do is just make sure you are in Selection Tool, single click here or shortcut is V, and then just double click on Start Parallax button. Just like that, this is going to open a new composition. As you can see, all of your compositions are down here, so you can close them and you reopen them by double clicking on the same button again. In this composition, as you can see, everything is disabled except of this button here and this whole section down here called Required Steps is what it says on the tin. You need to finish these steps before you can actually animate your image. So let's double click on this button which is called Add Background. This is going to open a new composition again and what we need to do here is import our image and create a background for our animation. If I go back to that video that I showed you at the beginning, 
you can see that this is the background, that layer down there. So that's what we're going to be creating. Back to After Effects. And let's import that image either by going to File, Import, File. And double click on your JPEG file. So this image is now inside of After Effects, but we need to bring it into Photo Motion. And you do that by dragging it over here, just like that. And if you zoom out, you can see that image is way too big. So what we need to do is scale that image. And you do that by clicking on this swirl and dragging it over here. That will parent your scale and position and rotation attributes to that first layer. So now you can use this scale attribute and just scale it down like this. Let's say, I don't know, something like this looks quite nice. And if we go back to that video again, you can see that that layer in the background is actually without the parrot, without these layers. So what we need to do, we need to use clone stamp tool inside of After Effects to create something like this. So back to After Effects and over here, there's this icon here. Just click on it called clone stamp tool. Shortcut is control plus B. And now make sure you select the second layer and then double click on it like that. That's gonna give you a new window. You can see the window is over here. And you can choose this brushes panel on this side to make your brush bigger or smaller. And all we need to do is hold down Alt key on your keyboard. That's gonna show you a different pointer. Single click, that's gonna pick this area. And now you can drag and paint like that. So we can basically remove this part from the image. Okay, this looks pretty good to me. What we need to do now is close this window. That will bring us back to this composition window. And then we can close this composition down here, which will bring us back to original main dashboard. Give it a second and that's going to enable a second button over here inside of your required steps called layer number one. So that's what you're going to do. Layer number one, if we look at our video, is this one, the first layer. So we're going to mask out these leaves over here and over here. And we're going to put that into that layer number one. So back in After Effects, one really important thing to do now is to switch back to the selection tool. Otherwise, you're going to be using that clone stamp tool on everything. So just switch back to this one or shortcut V and go down here and double click on this layer number one. Same thing here. We're just going to import our original layer. Again, this is way too big, but we don't need to scale it down again because we have this tool over here. So all you have to do is just click on this swirl, hold down shift. That's very important and drag it over here. That's going to parent that layer and it's actually going to copy your scale attribute from your background. So you don't need to scale this manually. So as I said, what we're going to do in this layer is going to be masking out these leaves over here and down here. I'm going to be using pen tool shortcut G, but there's also another way you can use rotor brush, which we're going to do for a second layer, which is going to be this part. But for this one, let's just use pen tool, single click on it. Make sure your layer is selected over here. And all you have to do is just start creating these masks on this layer. Something like this is perfectly fine. That's it. So now this part of the image is inside of the mask, but we also need to create masks for our other leaves. We can't see them now. So what are we going to do? We're going to single click on this layer down here, hit M on your keyboard. That's going to show you your masks. And we're going to temporarily click on this inverted button. Single click on that and that's going to show you everything except of that mask that we just created. And now we can create a new one by doing something like this. So now you have all of your masks over here and make sure you deselect this inverted. That's going to mask out everything for you like this. A little thing here to pay attention to is that your mask is really sharp on all of those edges. It just doesn't look natural to me at all. So what we have to do, we have to select all of them, hit F on your keyboard. That's going to bring out feathering and we're just going to drag this to something like that. That's perfectly fine. Okay, there are so many other ways how you can create these masks. One of them is to either use pen tool. Second one could be to use a brush tool or a rotor brush tool 
or you can actually do it in Photoshop and then import them here as well. And I'm going to show you that workflow at the end of the video. So now we are finished with this and we can close this composition. That will bring us back to main dashboard. And as you can see, there are so many new buttons here. We got a new controller in the middle of your screen, some other buttons on the right side of the screen as well. But all we need to do now is just go back here to the selection tool. Otherwise, you will be creating these masks everywhere. So click on that selection tool and just keep importing those layers. And then we're going to focus on animating them. Double click on layer number two. And we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to drag this image down here, parent it. Just make sure you hold down shift. There we go. And to show you a different workflow for creating these masks, I'm going to use Roto Brush tool. So just go over here to this button, single click on it, that's going to activate Roto Brush tool and just double click on your parrot layer just like that. And now what we need to do is start drawing these lines where we want our mask to be created. You just need to select inside of the mask, you don't need to go around the edges. So we're just going to do something like this and that's going to calculate some rough mesh for you. As you can see this uh, purple outline over here, that's your mask. So all you need to do now is just keep creating these green lines, just like this. If this happens to you that your mask is actually capturing more area than you want, just hold down Alt on your keyboard and start drawing these red lines like that. And that's going to remove that part from your mask. Again, don't try to be super precise here because you can tweak this mask in the next step. So let's say this is our mask. Obviously, it's not perfect. As you can see, we're going to need to do some tweaking over here, but that's absolutely fine. Just click on this X. That's going to close this little window. That's going to bring you back to this. And this is your rough mask by using Rotobrush. If you now go over here into Effect Controls panel, you can see you have some options to tweak your Roto Brush tool. If you don't see this panel, if it's closed like this, all you have to do is just go to Window and select Effect Controls. That's it. That's going to bring that panel over here. And you can do a couple of things here. For example, you can add some feathering to it or you can shift that edge. Close this composition, which is going to bring us back to this. And as you can see, now the bird is here. Again, we're going to do the same thing for the final layer. If you remember from our video, these are these branches over here. So let's just jump back here. Make sure you are inside of the selection tool. Double click on layer number three. Let's do the same thing. Parent it by holding now shift. And now let's mask these things over there. Same thing as before, we have two masks, so we need to hit M on our keyboard and temporarily enable inverted and just keep on masking. When you are finished with your masking, just make sure you disable this checkbox and that's going to bring those two together. But as you can see, now we are getting some kind of overlap over here because these leaves that are actually on layer number one are overlapping and are projecting on our layer number three. So all we have to do here again, just use clone stamp tool, click on that, double click on this layer and alt, hold down alt on your keyboard. Click somewhere like here, for example, and just keep adding it like that. That's absolutely fine. You don't need to be precise. That's perfect. You can close this window and back to selection tool. And we can close this layer number three as well. OK, so now we are back into this main dashboard composition. But one thing I wanted to point out was that don't get scared by all of that masking and creating clean plates and all of those things. I know it takes some time, but you have to understand that we are actually trying to animate a static picture. When you compare this to traditional parallax animation, where you just import a background and put a couple of more layers in front of it, this is slightly different because we are trying to animate something that was a static picture before. So obviously we need to separate these objects into each individual layer and then create that clean plate. So actually we are not exposing those things that were behind these layers. So don't get too scared and intimidated by all of that setup because this is a skill that you can now take and use it on your own images. OK, let's jump back to After Effects. This section over here, top right side of your screen, is actually for enabling different aspect ratios, different preview aspect ratios. So, for example, if you want to create a portrait resolution, 
single click on this button and now you need to enable it. Well, where do you enable this? You enable it in effect controls panel over here. If you don't see that panel, again, just go to window and choose effect controls. And there is a checkbox, click on that and that's gonna enable portrait resolution. You can test different ones like widescreen or square, just like that. For this tutorial, probably we're going to be sticking with this one, which is vertical. This is ideal for Instagram stories or Instagram TV. Let's have a look. Yep, that looks pretty nice. And now finally, it's time to animate our image. First things first, we need to move our timeline to something like four seconds. This is going to tell After Effects that our animation should start at this point and be four seconds long. Now to the fun part of actually animating this image. In the middle of your screen there is this blue controller, we call it Universal Controller because it allows you to zoom in, move, rotate and all of those things from the same controller. So all you have to do is just drag it wherever you want to, let's say here, uh, click on this button that will allow you to zoom in, just go to your effect controls again and do a little bit of zoom, something like this. You can then move it somewhere else so that we see the bird. That looks pretty nice, I think. We can add a little bit of rotation as well by doing this. This is not just your standard rotation, it actually calculates the distance between those objects, so it will look so much better than your standard rotation. Okay, now if you drag this timeline head back to initial frame, now you can see this is our animation. This is what we just created by using our universal controller. Now you might be wondering, where does my animation actually stops? Well, that's a good question, because as you remember, we put it on second number four, but there's no way of telling that where exactly that stops. So all you have to do is select all of those layers over here, by holding down shift and clicking on the first and then the last one and hitting U on your keyboard. That's going to reveal all of your keyframes. These little things, these are called keyframes. So if you just go on that keyframe like this, you can then move it to something like that and that will make your animation longer. So for example, if you want this animation to be six seconds long, you just put this keyframe on second number six. And we do the same thing for our zoom and our rotation as well. Just make sure they are aligned because otherwise it will create that kind of distorted effect. Now let's have a look on this section of the screen where we have additional options. So let's start from here. Single click on this, this will bring a new panel in your effect controls and you can see we have layer distribution that will tell After Effects how far apart these layers are between each other. Uh, play with this, depends on your picture. I usually start at around 30, that gives me a pretty nice parallax effect. Then we have movement multiplier, this will allow you to tell how strong that controller affects all of those layers over there. So again, something to play with. Then the next one, really popular, is depth of field. If you drag the slider, it's gonna create this depth of field effect and you can focus it on different layers. So currently it's focusing on layer number one, but we can disable that and focus on layer number two, and it's gonna uh, keep that focus on this parrot. I'm gonna turn it off for now, just like that. And really cool feature that we have is called Boomerang. What Boomerang does is that your animation is gonna be playing from here to there over the six seconds, but if you activate Boomerang, it's gonna play from this, all over back to default position and then again and this happens in continuous loop so you know you can create animations that are as long as you want by using our boomerang tool if you disable it obviously your animation is gonna run from zero to six and then it's just gonna stop a couple of other things that we have over here color single click on that that will allow you to you know play with colors of your image so for example we can add a little s curve over here just to boost that contrast you can also add a little bit of green by going here select green and just boost it like like this that looks pretty nice next this button over here called other 
allows you to do basic things like hide this controller, for example. So that controller is still there, but it's transparent, it's invisible. So now you can see your animation without that annoying controller being visible. Other thing is faster previews. What faster previews is doing is that when you have your uh, depth of field enabled, uh, and then enable faster previews, it will disable depth of field and a couple of other things, so your preview is faster. And that actually reminds me that we haven't talked about previewing your animation. All you have to do is just go over here, drop this down to, this is a preview resolution, drop it down to half, for example, and then drag this over here to time zero, and hit spacebar, and this is going to preview your animation. And now you are able to scrub this timeline. As I'm looking at it now, we probably need to increase our layer distribution because these three layers are moving in a similar fashion. I would, I would much rather to see more of that parallax effect going on. So let's just go back to full resolution so we can see these buttons better. Uh, click on animation and layer distribution, put it to 40 for example. And then let's see if that helps. Probably even more. You can do even more. You can even do this. I will go way close to him and then just enable that controller again so we can see it. Uh, make sure you align your time head with your keyframes. And then click on this and just a little bit less of that zoom effect. But as you can see now, we are exposing these edges over here. What we need to do is just make sure we are not doing that. So let's do something like this. You can still see a little bit of that edge going on here, but that's absolutely fine. We're going to fix that in a second. So our animation now has this really nice parallax effect going on. Back over on this side of the screen, let's select background and that will allow you to do a couple of things here. For example, you can darken the background or make it lighter. You can also scale this specific layer by dragging this and that got rid of that black edge going on there. Uh, you can do the same thing for each of these individual layers. What I usually like to do is select my focal point, which in this image would be this parrot. So that is on layer number two. So select that and just boost that contrast a little bit or make it lighter something like this, so your eye is immediately drawn to him rather than the background or these branches over there. Okay, before we go to particle section, let me just quickly disable these faster previews. So just go to other and disable this. And now we have this background blurred. We don't want that for now. So go to animation and drop this depth of field to zero. That's gonna bring us back to default. Okay, let's go to particle section now. Single click on this button, which will allow you to activate our 3D particles. Have a look at this. Give it a few seconds and boom, you have your full 3D particle system. There are 3D particles in 3D space that are actually already animated for you. So you don't need to animate them separately from your initial animation. And this is actually gonna boost that parallax effect even more. There are plenty of things that you can do with these particles. So let's have a look. For example, we can change the particle type. If we move this time head to zero, so we can see these foreground particles, uh, we can choose different particle type, let's say number four, and that's gonna replace all of those particles with a different particle type. So for example, these are some kind of confetti or I don't know what this is. Uh, but as you can see, they are fully animated for you. This feature alone is going to save you so much time. This is uh, it's just unbelievable. Let's pick some particle type that is actually suitable for this environment. Let's select some falling leaves. As you can see, we have 29 different particle types. So you can just drag this slider and that's going to give you different particles. But let's have a look at this one, for example. This is number 15. If you just type 15, uh, we have these lovely leaves, falling leaves. So if we just play our animation now, you can see that looks pretty stunning. There are also other options here that you can play with. For example, you can turn on black and white particle types. So it's just gonna desaturate all of them if you prefer this kind of look. You can also play with color correction over here. So for example, if you want to boost 
these particles to something like this and probably even uh, boost green color in it. We can just do this. That looks pretty nice. And all of these settings affect all of those particles at the same time. But what if you want to, for example, affect only these front particles? As you can see, if we zoom in, this particle is obviously in front of this parrot. So what if we want to affect only those particles? You can do that over here. So single click on close. That is going to reveal this window over here. So you can even disable them just like that. You can choose a different particle type. You can scale them, make them bigger, for example or make them smaller you can choose density as well so at this point we have two of them here if we drop this down to something like this you can see that changed that density so we only see one particle now let's just leave it at three you can change position of them so if they are obstructing your uh, main object like let's say if that would be here you don't want to have particle obstructing your main focal point so you can move it to some other position let's say over here just like that and obviously you can do color correction on those particles by using this color correction curve and that's not all because you can change a different particle here as well so just go up over here and click on override master settings and that will allow you to choose a different particle type and make a color correction on it as well so let's say we want a different particle type here just drag the slider again and that's going to give you different particles on that specific layer so as you can see you can combine these particles together and create some really nice effects for now we're just going to disable this that's going to bring those originals back I'm going to play with color correction on all of these particle layers just to integrate them better into this scene. Uh, we're just going to fast forward through it. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. All we need to do now is get it outside of photo motion and export it as a video. And you do that by double clicking on this export button. That's going to open a new composition and as you can see you have multiple options here so our chosen resolution is always over here so all we need to do is double click on it but you also have an option to export different resolutions so if we decided to export portrait resolution you do that by double clicking on this this is your default 16 to 9 obviously not ideal for this type of picture because it was already vertical so now we have these black bars over here so for this type of picture probably our uh, vertical or portrait would would be ideal resolutions so let's just stick with vertical double click on it and that's going to open a new composition and this is the one that we're actually going to render now if you look down here you can see this composition is about one minute long so you obviously don't want to render out the whole minute for no good reason because if you have a look back here our animation is only six seconds long and then the rest is just still so we need to tell after effects to render only six seconds of this animation and you do that by going back to this and we have a tool to help you with this and it is called photo motion perfect cut system it is located down here and is actually telling you now to make a cut on frame number 181 and if you go over here and hold down command and control click on it and that's going to switch to frame time code just single click on that and type 181 hit enter and that's going to move your timeline head exactly to that frame and as you can see photo motion is telling you yep this is exactly the frame where you should make that cut how do you do that you go over here and drag this thing and just move it over there like this if you hold down shift that's going to snap to that or even better easier way is click n on your keyboard that's going to put this over there just like that that's going to set your out point this is called out point this is all you have to do here but before we go ahead and render out this animation let me just quickly show you these two buttons over here if you single click on settings it will allow you to do different kinds of things this for example will allow you to add additional lens distortion to your image if you want that let's just put something like this in there uh, a little bit of vignetting something like that you can even scale your whole composition up, down. You can move it left, right if you want. For example, something like this. 
Let's just leave it in the middle for now. And this magic button over here, this is for our FX library. Double click on it, it's gonna open that library for you and you can choose from different types of our mini libraries. We call them mini libraries because they give you access to different kinds of things. For example, color corrections, light leaks, moving particles and all sorts of other things. Uh, let's just put a little bit of light leak on that image. Double click on this, it's gonna open this gallery. And if you scrub the timeline now, you will see the preview of all of those light leaks. You can even hit the spacebar, that's going to play those animations for you. Uh, we have multiple pages here, so if you want to switch to page number two, you just drag this thing over here, that's going to switch to page number two. Let's see if we have something nice going on over here. This one looks pretty nice, so single click on that and hit Command or Control Copy or just go to Edit and choose Copy. Switch back to that render composition over here and just go to Edit, Paste or Control V. Just like that. Now you can see your light leak is being applied. If you scrub the timeline now, you will see that light leak is there. So all of these effects are automatically seamlessly looped for you, but you can also use this marker called Fade Out and just drag it where you want your animation, I mean, where you want your effect to fade out, just like that. So let's just put it over here. So that light leak is going to play in continuous loop until this point where it's just going to fade out slowly. One thing to remember is that you should move this effect layer below over here just so you are able to click on these buttons again. If you still can't click on them, all you have to do is just make sure this layer is deselected by clicking over here. Then you will be able to click on this effect button again. Let's just add a little bit more of moving particles. Let's have a look what we have here. So for example, I quite like these over there. So single click on it, control copy, back to that render vertical composition, paste it here. And again, just move it below. And now we can move it over here, just like this. And all of those particles are going to be there, moving automatically inside of your animation. Again, just make sure this fade out is set somewhere over there, because otherwise your particles will fade out. So now we are ready to render this out. And you do that by going over here to File, Export, and Add to Render Queue. That's gonna open a render queue, it's over here, next to your compositions. Nothing special here really, all you have to do is just click on this lossless word and choose your codec. Let's say we're gonna export QuickTime Movie, click on that, click on Format Options, that will allow you to specify your video codec. And from this drop-down we can choose, for example, GoPro Cineform, number 4 quality, that's fine, hit OK, that's all good. Hit OK again, and now we need to specify our output path, so click on this and just put it somewhere, for example on our desktop, as usual, and just hit save. And before we render this out, let's just save this whole project as a new project, so we can always come back to it. So just choose Save As and save as something else. Parallax first animation. Hit save. And this is going to save this project into that After Effects file, so you can take that file with the whole folder with you on another computer and continue where you left off. All that's left to do here is to hit Render button. So here is our final animation. So if you remember, I also promised you that I'm going to show you some additional tips for this animation. So first one is going to be about adding additional movement by using a puppet tool in After Effects. And the second one is going to be about masking, masking inside of photo motion. So let's have a look how it's done. So let's have a look how to apply this puppet tool animation. We're going to animate this part just to give him a little bit of movement and you can do that going back to this main dashboard composition, double click on layer number two because that's where our part is currently living. And single click on this part layer and then just go over here, click on this, this is puppet position pin tool. Single click on that and that will allow you to create these puppet points. Place them strategically on your image, something like 
this, that would do. Things like this, this branch for example down here, they shouldn't have multiple points purely because they shouldn't be really moving. You kind of need to pin them down so we can animate these over there. One little cool tip is to go over here and click on show mesh. That's going to show you your mesh for that mask. And what you have to do now is just animate it really. So we're going to start with position on frame number zero and we're going to animate this just going to move his head a little bit. Something like this. Move his neck as well. Maybe a little bit more. That would do. And what we need to do now is just go back to this main dashboard and just have a look where is our last keyframe. So drag this and just position it precisely on that. If you hold down shift, it's going to snap to it and it will show you it is on frame number 181. If you single click on it, you can copy it. If you don't see this, all you have to do is just control click and that's going to switch from this to this. So we just copy this 181, go back to layer import, paste it over here just like this. That's going to put it there. And now we just move these points again. Let's say we're going to put them like this, so he's kind of starting to look down. Something like that. If you scrap the timeline now, you'll see that animation. If you just drop this down to different resolution, you can hide that mesh now. And let's try to play this animation. This looks pretty cool, but I would probably give it a little bit of boost. So how you do that? All you have to do, click on this last layer, powered layer. Hit U on your keyboard, that's going to, again, expose all of your keyframes. So you have all of these puppet pinpoints. Uh, you just need to find these two where we created these two keyframes. Hold down Shift, drag this timeline head, put it over there, just like that. And now you can move it even more, something like that. Maybe move his wing a little bit, like this. Let's bump it up to full resolution so we see if we are creating any... Uh, distortion. Yeah, so it will go from this position to this position. Looks pretty cool. Nothing else you need to do here. You can close this composition, go back to main dashboard and your parrot will be animated. So we will start from this position and we will end up over here also fully animated with that puppet tool animation that we just specified. Everything else stays the same. You render it out by double clicking on this export button. Uh, just make sure you are inside of selection tool. Double click on it, render it out, and your parrot will be moving. Okay, so this is our image inside of Photoshop. What we need to do is create those layers, those three layers, and our clean plate. I did that, and this is how it looks. So this is layer number one, layer number two, and layer number three. And then we have our clean plate that looks something like this. We're going to do that again. So I'm just going to delete all of those layers. And we're going to start fresh like this. All we have to do, drag this layer to the new layer symbol. That's going to create a duplicate from it. Let's name it layer one. And layer one are obviously these leaves over here. So that's what we're going to be masking. I can select this tool over here, similar to After Effects, and start drawing your mask, something like this. That's fine. If it goes uh, outside of the edge, all you have to do is just hold down Alt on your keyboard and just do something like that. Mask out those areas that are not included, that, are sh that shouldn't be included. That's absolutely fine. Just keep on clicking on these areas that shouldn't be included there. Okay, this looks pretty decent for this area over there, but we need to put these leaves down here into the same mask as well. So we just keep on clicking. Okay, this looks pretty good for our rough mask of these leaves. What we need to do now is just go over here and click on this button that's going to create a mask for you. So if you just hide this background layer now, you will see your mask is over there. Now, the thing is, that mask is way too sharp, so we need to blur and offset that mask a little bit. All we have to do is just go over here into Properties tab and click Select and Mask. It's going to open a new panel. And you have a couple of sliders here, so you can play with them, you know, adjust that mask a little bit, so it's not as sharp. 
smooth it out, a little bit of feathering. That's absolutely fine. Over here on this section, you can click on this button here. That's a brush. Just make it a little bit bigger. Something like that. And you can change view over there. Click on this, click overlay. And now you can see that there is actually something going on here. So we need to remove that. Hold down Alt on your keyboard and start painting. Just like that. And over here as well, you can see some of these things are not properly masked. All right, I think this looks pretty good. All you need to do now, click OK. And that's it. Your layer number one is finished. Let's do the same thing for layer number two. So again, we're going to duplicate this. Name it layer two. And I'm just going to do the same thing, exactly the same thing here as well. So I'm just going to uh, speed it up for you. Okay, so this is pretty good. Click OK. I will bring you back here. Do the same thing for layer number three. That's fine. That looks pretty good to me. Hit OK. And now we have all of these three layers here. So this is layer number one, layer number two, and layer number three. Now what we need to do is create our clean plate, which is going to be behind all of these layers. And you do that again by duplicating this background layer like this. Name it clean plate. So the point of clean plate is to add those pixels behind your layer objects. So the easiest way to do that would be selecting all of these three masks that we have here and actually filling only those areas and leaving everything else as it is. Let's do that. So hold down control plus shift and start clicking on these black and white masks just like that. And that's going to put all of those masks into one selection. Now what you have to do is just go over here to select modify and expand and depending on your image size what you need to do is just expand it by a certain amount of pixels let's say for this one we're going to choose i don't know 15 pixels hit okay as you can see your mask is now a little bit bigger and that's good so what we need to do now is just go to edit fill and choose content aware that's all you have to do hit okay give it a second Okay, so this is your clean plate. As you can see, it looks pretty nice. What we need to do now is just deselect it. So you go to select, deselect or control plus D. Click on that and that's it. As you can see, there are little imperfections on certain areas. You can fix them by going here to these three dots and select spot healing brush tool. Just make sure type is selected to content aware and you can start brushing like that. And that's going to remove them completely. Okay, so this looks pretty good. So now you have your clean plate, then you have your layer number three, layer number two, and layer number one. So all you need to do now is select this as a PSD layered file, uh, not as a standard JPEG, because otherwise you won't be able to access these layers anymore. And you do that by going to File, Save As, and save it as something, let's say, current new, so I don't overwrite my original one. Just make sure this checkbox down here is selected and hit Save. Hit OK, and that's it. Now you can close Photoshop and jump back to After Effects. So back inside After Effects, what we need to do here is to import that PSD file. And you do that by going to File, Import, File. Choose your newly created PSD file. Double click on it. Import kind should be selected as Composition. And just make sure your merge layer styles into footage is selected as well. Hit OK. And now you can safely delete this composition from here. Hit delete. And this folder is really important now because it contains all of your layers and clean plate. So we need to import that into Photomotion. And you do that by going to Add Background. We need to import our clean plate here. So let's just drag it over there like this. We can safely delete this original one. And we need to make sure it is actually connected to this uh, initial parenting layer. So I'm going to hold down Shift because it's going to copy this value for me automatically. And there we go. So this is our clean plate. Let's do the same for layer number one. Again, we can safely delete this and just drag layer number one here. 
Again, shift parent to original layer. Close this. There we go. Layer number two, same thing. Delete original. Put it here. Again, shift parent to the original. Close. There we go. And finally, layer number three. Delete. Put it over there like that and parent it with holding shift. That's it. You can close it. And as you can see, this is how you import your PSD file into Photomotion Parallax. So now you know how to create parallax animations in Photomotion. We also have more videos about different types of photo animations, such as this cool face animation tutorial. So if you are into photo animation, make sure you have a look at that one as well. Also, if you like this video and you want to see more of this type of content, let us know by subscribing to our channel or give us your like. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I'm going back to do some more of these parallax animations for our social media, but I'll see you in the next video.